This is Marketing Jam, a show featuring the brightest minds in marketing. Brought to you by Canada Post. Head to canadapost.ca forward slash insight podcast for ideas to add value to your marketing. Welcome to another episode of Marketing Jam. Thank you so much for joining us. Thank you, Canada Post, for making this show possible. Uh, this is a guest I am so excited about. Uh, I have um, been following him for many years. Uh, I know that many Canadians have been following him. He's come up to different conferences over the years. Uh, so, Guy, thank you so much for coming on the show today. Thank you. Um, you know, Canada is maybe my favorite country in the world. Well, it's Canada, Canada or Australia. Okay, and how do you pick? How do you decide which country? <laughs> uh, the quality of the donuts. Okay, yes, yes. <laughs> that's, uh, that's a great <laughs> judgment piece. Uh, it could also be like what musical sensations have come out of our countries. Like uh, Australia, you got, you got the Wiggles, so we, yeah. it's hard to compete with those guys. Well, and Canada has Justin Bieber. Yeah, so there you go. There you go. There, that's good. That's I rest good. my case. It's very comparable. <laughs> So Guy, um, your history, it, it's very full of some pretty monumental experiences. For, for those that maybe haven't um, you know, looked you up on Wikipedia or maybe haven't been following you for the years, maybe give some of the highlights of some of your um, kind of career journey, kind of your origin story as some would say. Well, I would not label it monumental. So I worked for the Macintosh division. Mm -hmm. Even prior to that, I worked for a jewelry manufacturer as a matter of fact. So I worked for a jewelry manufacturer. Yeah. Uh, from there, I went to Apple. I was Apple's software evangelist in the Macintosh division. I left, started some companies, returned to Apple as Apple's chief evangelist, mm -hmm. left and started another company. And now I am chief evangelist of Canva, which is an online graphic design service out of Sydney, Australia. I am a Mercedes-Benz brand ambassador, and I'm a podcaster. I have a podcast called Remarkable People. That's amazing. So tell me about your podcast for those that uh, yes. are interested in learning more. So, you know, guess what Remarkable People focuses on? Duh, Remarkable People. Okay. So th these is, this is an interview series. Uh, I've had guests such as Jane Goodall, Margaret Atwood, speaking of Canadians, mm -hmm. yeah. uh, Andrew Yang, Roy Yamaguchi from yeah. Roy's Restaurants, Steven Pinker. I think he's also Canadian. Uh, Gary Vaynerchuk. Yeah. Oh God, I would, I could just go on and on and yeah. on. And so my goal here is to record remarkable people talking about their remarkable lives, how mm. they got there, what they did, the lessons of their lives. And if you listen, if you listen to my podcast, um, it's basically the person speaking ninety five percent of the time, and I'm five percent. So this is not one of those kind of podcast where the podcaster is trying to position himself or herself as the you know the talent and, mm -hmm. and who the focus should be on I, it's all about the other person on mm -hmm. my podcast it's very cool very cool. so much like if you like this interview style you would like uh, your show where it's more about the other person and what they're up to and what they're doing as it should be good <laughs> Very cool. So what's been your uh, kind of journey in finding these people and how have you discovered them and, and how do you filter who the best folks to have on your show are? It's a very interesting story. So I am 66 years old, so mm -hmm. I've been at it since 1983. Yeah. So I have, yeah, 37 years of exposure. And what I've discovered in life is I obviously know a lot of people, but it's almost more important of who knows of you than who knows you. Right. So, you know, I didn't know Jane Goodall in advance, but she knew of me and people who connected me knew of me. And so uh, I started off with Jane Goodall mm. and then I got oh, Ariana Huffington mm. and Margaret Atwood and Stephen Wolfram, who's a MacArthur Award winner. So let's just say that when you call up a potential guest or you send an email to potential guests and you say, well, I have a podcast called Remarkable People, you would be on the same show as Jane Goodall, Margaret Atwood, Andrew Yang, Steven Pinker, Stephen Wolfram, Waz. Mm -hmm. You know, it, it tends to make it easy. And the, the more I go along, 
actually the easier it gets mm. because now they're thinking, oh, you know, he must be for real. He got Jane Goodall and Margaret Atwood. It's not like, you know, he's got your random Joker off the street. Mm. Yeah, yeah, that's very cool. I will. I, I let me. If you have a moment, I'll tell you a very funny story. Yeah, yeah. So now, every day it seems, I get a email from Joe Blow or Joe Blow's publicist. Okay. And it always starts off with, we're big fans of your podcast, Remarkable People. Mm -hmm. And I think I should be on your show. You know, my name is Joe Blow. Yeah. I run Blow Industries. It's yeah. a consulting firm. We've already <laughs> achieved mid, mid six digit revenue. Yeah. I wrote a book called The Blow Way. Yeah. It's published by Blow Press. And so I think I should be because I'm remarkable. Yeah. And so what I do is I send them back an email. I say, well, you know, Joe, I'm just not familiar with your work. Yeah. Can you just tell me how you've dented the universe? Yeah. Like Margaret Atwood, Jane Goodall, Ariana Huffington, Steve Wozniak, Steve mm -hmm. Wolfram, Steve Pinker, Roy Yamaguchi, Christy mm -hmm. Yamaguchi. Just, you know, I'm sorry. I just, I, I, I don't know of you yet. So please yeah. fill me in how you're as remarkable as they are. Yeah. And they kind of disappear. Um, so my basic algorithm is that anybody who asks to be on the show yeah. probably should not be on the show. Wow. Okay, that's some that's some good advice. There you go. <laughs> <laughs> that's great. So maybe um, you can use that in your guest selection. No, that's perfect. That's very helpful. Thank you. <laughs> Thank you. So as now, you no, I, no, I didn't ask you to be on your show, right? Correct. Correct. I, I, I have chased you. I've been following you. I've been a fanboy for many years. So this is, yeah, this is dream come true. Um, for, for someone like yourself, you, you've seen the spectrum of time when it's come from, you know, your, your days at Macintosh and, and to what you're doing now with Canva, et cetera. Uh, you know, you, you probably get asked this in different ways, but what has been the biggest shift when it comes to marketing? I know it's hard to kind of pinpoint just one, but as far as like shift, if you're to oh, say, hey man, if you fast forward and need the future. That's not hard at all. The biggest shift by far is social media. Social media just changed marketing, I think, completely. And, and to the better and to the worse. And that is a true revolution in marketing. Now, if, if this Facebook boycott by Coca-Cola and all that, if that really impacts Facebook and Facebook backs down, we're going to have a whole other discussion. Yeah. But the social media has changed marketing forever. Wow. And, and how would you describe the good and how would you describe the bad? And maybe well, there's an ugly too. Yeah, the good is that uh, you can earn your respect using social media in almost a fast, free, and ubiquitous way, right? So if you're really good at content generation, whether it's pictures or video or articles, um, I think that the cream rises to the top. Mm -hmm. That's the good news. So you don't need to run a Super Bowl commercial. Now the bad news is yeah, because of the trolls and because of the fake news and because of the you know anti-vaxxers and all this mm -hmm. kind of stuff, it also tends to become an echo chamber and it becomes yeah. kind of a cesspool. Yeah. So you know that's the good and the bad. Uh, but well, there's, there's no sense theoretically discussing whether it's good or bad because it is what it is and we just have to deal with it and make it work for us. Now, you know, I, I happen to think that the service that Facebook provides, i.e. Mm. very narrow and specific targeting, is extremely useful for a marketer. Mm -hmm. Having said that, you know, there's some things that Facebook provides to other marketers that I would not think is optimal let's just yeah. say so you know you 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 can't have everything yeah yeah so for someone like yourself using canva and and you know wherever i go I'm doing these workshops webinars we always promote canva and say okay. how great it is and, and accessible it is and um true story we hired a graphic designer here at our firm uh and when he discovered canva he was distraught he said, I went to school for four years. Uh, you know, we hired him because he was the best grad out of you know, graphic design school program here in Canada. Uh, and he was, said, man, it does everything that I was trained for four years to do, but can do it in, in minutes, what takes me hours. Yeah. 
yeah. uh, whether it's infographics or newsletters. Um, so was that Canva's aim? Like, I, this is just an anecdotal story, but like, what's, it, what's Canva's kind of main purpose right. for those that haven't discovered it yet? So did you have to let him go because he was not? <laughs> no, but what happened was, so for example, he was expecting that, oh man, I'm going to make like a few infographics a week. I'll do some designs a week. But then he's like, would normally I'd maybe be able to do 10 designs a week. I can now do a hundred thanks yeah. to Canva. So he says it just supercharged his abilities. Well, uh, now I've been with Canva for six years and it was never our intent to put designers out of business. Yeah. Right? So what we wanted to do was democratize design mm -hmm. and empower everyone to be able yeah. to create designs. So now one of the possible outcomes of that is what you described that you know designers have been trained for years to do this and along comes Canva. But I mean is that any different than if you were an IT guy or gal and you've been trained for years how to uh, set up IT systems and all that and you know help people use their computers and all of a sudden there's Macintosh and mm -hmm. Macintosh is WYSIWYG point and click so now you know people can do what you had to teach them how to do is that good or bad I mean I, I would make the point that it's good that more people can use computers more people can design um, I, I also think that there's some elements of design like you know logo design for example the look and feel you don't just go to canva yeah. and you know do that right so there's still this truly artistic uh, endeavor now you can create your own logo with canva but the design center of canva is that there are hundreds of design types where a design type is an instagram photo pinterest flyer business card book cover, CD cover, mm -hmm. you know, there's hundreds of those kinds of things. And within each of those, we have hundreds of designs. So if you want to make an infographic, if you go to the infographic design type, we have hundreds of infographics for you to start with. Mm -hmm. But even that, I think we empower more people to become designers mm -hmm. and we empower designers to become better designers. Mm -hmm. So, uh, you know, uh, that horse is out of the barn, mm -hmm. and uh, I, I'd be interested to see, you know, what does your designer think of it now? Well, he, he said it just amplified his job, so it, it allowed him to multiply the efforts. And still, and even with his design eye on Canva mixed with it, he said it's a powerful combination, and I yeah. see it. Because, you know, he, he said, man, I can work off this base, and then he can adjust the look and feel. So he, he's loved it. And, well, and also, uh, working internally maybe it's not so true but working with clients the ability to collaborate with Canva yeah. because it's cloud-based is so much better than oh you know uh, I'm going to share a Dropbox folder with you or I'm going to send you a PDF and what do you think of the PDF I mean just going back and forth and I think the other thing that it does for a brand is uh, you can enforce certain standardization right mm -hmm. so if, if you run a Canadian real estate firm mm -hmm and you have hundreds of offices who have hundreds of listings and each listing needs a, a web page and it needs a flyer and it needs the you know the thing in the box that you pick up if you want to go and uh, learn more about the house well if you're the, the the central marketing function of that real estate firm you you don't want every agent all over Canada saying oh you know I like uh, Comic Sans and mm -hmm. I like Helvetica and I like Times. Well, you want to say, okay, so our firm's standard font is this, and our our color palette is this, mm -hmm. and this is the flyer template that you are to use for your new listing. That I got to believe makes the life of graphic designers working centrally a lot easier. Yeah. Yeah, and so in Canva, one cool thing you guys did during COVID, you offered the premium version for yeah. free for, yes. to help out some small businesses, to help out businesses that were struggling, which I thought was really cool. Yes, and we, we also have a very active uh, Canva for Good program, which is for not-for-profits. Hmm. So we, we like to help not-for-profits. Um, okay. there, there's a deep and meaningful soul to Canva. Uh. 
And so uh, when Canva is, is doing what they're doing, are they happy where they are now? Or is there some new pieces that are coming down the pipe that we should be looking for or that you're well, allowed to let us know? You know, in a perfect world, every graphic created in the world would be built on Canva. Okay, that's, yeah, yeah. <laughs> you know what I'm saying? <laughs> we have modest goals. Um, but no, things, things are going extremely well. We have about 30 million uh, monthly active users. Wow. We get hundreds of, uh, excuse me, we get millions of designs every day. Yeah. Uh, we, we literally create multiple millions of designs every day for people. So it's, um, and I call it guys golden touch. So guys golden touch is not that I touched Canva and turned it to gold. Guys golden touch is I touch whatever is gold. Because mm -hmm. I have to tell you, the key to marketing is it's very easy to market great stuff. It's hard to market crap. Hmm. And once you figure that out, all of marketing is easy. Wow. So when you saw Canva, was it introduced to you or were you using it or how did that come along? I and the person who helps me with social media was using yeah. it. Yeah. They saw a tweet of mine using Canva and they reached out to me and, you know, next thing you know, I'm working for them. So, um, yeah, I. it's not like my resume was floating around the graphic design yeah. world and Canva found it on, you know, uh, what's it called? What's that? Sir? Well, indeed. Not, yeah, indeed or monster yeah. jobs or, you yeah. know, LinkedIn. Yeah. Yeah. Uh, yeah. No, they found me because of a tweet. That's very cool. And do you get it? You get, I imagine you get to go to Australia, see what they're up to and kind of see I used that. to yeah. until the pandemic. Yes. Yeah. 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 So are you seeing other kind of things coming out of Australia like that? Other kind of software and kind of social media solutions? Well, I mean, you know, there's sort of two big companies in Australia. There's Atlassian and there's Canva, but there are other things happening. And I think one of the outcomes of the pandemic is that it truly will flatten the world hmm. where people used to think that all the action had to happen within a 50 mile radius of Silicon Valley. But now when everybody's on a Zoom call or yeah. Skype, yeah, you know, I, I literally don't know. You could be in Toronto, you could be in yeah. Halifax, you could be in Montreal, you could be in Vancouver, yeah. you could be in New York City. I have no idea. So now if you're thinking of startups and you know what's the hot company and all that, one of the proxies was, not that I believe that this mm. is accurate, but one of the proxies was, oh, this is a Silicon Valley company. You know, that mm. that there was a slight uptick, right? There was a slight yeah. it's like saying, um, He's a producer from Hollywood. That's a lot better than being a producer from, I don't know, you know, uh, Wichita. Wichita, or yeah. um, uh, God, what's the place in the middle of, you know, Edmonton or? Oh, uh, Edmonton, Winnipeg. Winnipeg's right, another great right. city. We yeah. Winnipeg, yeah. Not to insult any of those three cities. Mm -hmm. So now, literally, who knows where you are, and yeah. arguably, who cares? Yeah, yeah, that's. That's a very good point. And yeah, I, I love listening to music out of Australia. There's a great band, Hill Songs, that I love. And, and you know, yeah, it doesn't matter where they are. They, you could listen to them anywhere. Yep. Just like, yeah, software. So tell me about this um, stuff that's happening with Reddit. Are you, do you follow Reddit? Do you go on there? Is that something that you as a marketer, as a leader, look at and get nope. involved with? No? Nope. Okay. That's, you stay <laughs> off of it? I never go to Reddit. Um, you know, I... I I just don't need the aggravation. Yes. I, I do like to do ask me anything. Yes. Okay. But uh, wh when I do an ask me anything, obviously I'm on, I'm on Reddit or whatever platform, yeah. but I never frequent it. Um, my major social media effort is LinkedIn. Okay. Okay. Because I think LinkedIn, it's much more likely that the person is who he or she says yeah. he or she yeah. is yeah. than any other one. And, um, you know, because I just, I don't like to waste time arguing with Russian bots. Yes. Okay. <laughs> there you go. That's a great. <laughs> so when you're on social, when you're on LinkedIn, what's kind of your purpose or what are you doing right now? What's your advice to those that are okay, in marketing? So, yeah, yeah. Um, this is in the category of do what I say, not do what I do. Okay. Uh, so as I said before, I'm 66. I'm at the end of my careers. Okay. You know, I started my career at Apple. I'm ending it with Canva. Yeah. And so I'm never going to apply for another job. I don't yeah. care if anybody hires me. You know, I don't have any of those constraints, right? So basically, yeah. I just don't give a shit. Yeah. And at this point, I think that the existential threat to the United States and maybe even the world mm -hmm. 
is the Trump administration. Hmm. And so if you look at my social media flows, they're kind of dedicated to politics. Okay. And I, you know, I can't say that I recommend this to any brand or anybody else, but um, I, I, I'll tell you a story. So in 2016, I was in Germany. I was having dinner with some friends, and they said, "You know, guy, to this day, you know, we wonder and we ask our grandparents, like, how did Hitler come to power? Like, hmm. what? Why did German people let Hitler come to power?" And then they said to me, "And you know, guy." It is 1930 for you in the United States. So, you know, do you want your grandchildren wondering if you resisted Trump? Mm. And that's the day I decided to go all in and resist. Nice. Okay. Wow. And so that's kind of where you're going. You're spending your time, energy, yes. using infographics, using Canva, maybe. <laughs> I, I don't. I, an infographic about Donald Trump. Oh, my head is exploding. I mean. Mm. I, yeah. <laughs> Uh, no. <laughs> okay. So speaking of politics and kind of going there, uh, one of the big questions and kind of pieces right now in marketing is, is diversity in marketing. Yes. Whether it's um, you know, stock photos or whether it's you know, people on the board, people in leadership. Mm -hmm. uh, what are your thoughts? What are your kind of, how would you speak to that and how marketers can think more about diversity and well, involvement? Uh, first of all, uh, I, 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 I I don't think that anyone who has not walked a mile or 10 miles or 100 miles in other people's shoes can really understand, you know, what it is to be black in America. Mm -hmm. um, uh, for example, w when my kids go out in the morning, I don't have any fear that they're going to be pulled over, pulled out of their car, mm -hmm. handcuffed and shot. Okay, not at all. And so it's it's very difficult. I think right now the attitude should be one of learning mm. um, as opposed to recommending. Mm. So I, I don't know the answer to these questions. And I, I think that we are at a tipping point. And I hope this Black Lives Matter um, activity continues. Mm. And, you know, paint, paint the street in front of Trump Tower, Black Lives Matter, man. I, I'll, I'll pay for the paint. And so... I, I think we're at a tipping point, and um, you know we're either going to go one way or the other. It's we're going to look back and say, "Wow, either what were we thinking, or thank God we did what we did." Wow. And are you seeing some brands or some marketers kind of taking a stand or kind of pushing the envelope? Or uh, well, I mean, difference? you know, for some brands to just say we're not going to advertise on Facebook because of the hate and yeah. falsities that you propagate. Uh, I mean, that's a pretty powerful stand right there. But if you look at the extreme ones, uh, Ben and Jerry's and Patagonia, I mean, they take stands, right? And uh, when Dick Sporting Goods stops selling guns or rifles, you know, that is a stand. Hmm. And I, I think that's to be commended. Now, I have been on both sides of this equation, and uh, for the marketers who are listening to this, um, my experience is that. You know, I have friends at an apparel company, and this CEO says something very derogatory about f people who watch Fox. I mean, mm. very derogatory, okay? And so it became this whole thing about there's going to be a boycott. There's going to be I'll never buy your garment again. I was thinking mm. of buying your garment, and uh, I'll never touch you, and I'm going to tell all my friends not to buy you mm. and all that. And so this company was just basically, you know, shedding you know what, or you know what bricks, yeah, which is the proper way to say that. So anyway, but then you know if you and I, and I said so what happened? You know, did your sales mm -hmm. plummet? And he said no, it it didn't matter at all. So basically, you know, all these people who threaten you, know, I, I'll never buy your shirt, I'll never buy your pants, I'll never buy your whatever because this blah blah blah, they probably weren't going to buy it anyway. Mm. And now, now th this is not to be confused with Facebook situation because if, if Patagonia or Coca-Cola says we are not advertising on Facebook, that's not a random threat. That's not mm -hmm. like saying, uh, you know, if Joe Blow or Jane Blow says I'll never buy an ad on Facebook again, 
and that person doesn't have a small business that's buying ads, you know, it kind of doesn't matter. But if the CMO of Coca-Cola says, I'm not buying ads on Facebook again, <laughs> that's something to pay attention to. Yeah. Wow. Yeah, it's been a bit of a wake-up call, I imagine, for Facebook. Yeah, and I think yes. they're scrambling to try to find fixes and, and uh, hopefully maybe by the end of the month they'll have uh, declared something or made a switch, but we'll I, see, I guess. I, we will see. I don't, you know, I... That's why Mark Zuckerberg and Sheryl Sanders makes the big bucks. I mean, this is a very hairy issue. Yeah. Um, just to switch topics here, you, you've worked brand side for a long time. I imagine you've spent your time working with various agencies. For those that are agency side listening to the show, what's your biggest advice to like have a successful brand agency relationship? What's some, maybe some of the best experiences you've had with agencies? Oh man, I I I don't work with agencies very much, mm -hmm. and you know I I. Honestly, I'm not one of those influencers. Well, Flair, first, I'm not that influential, but I'm also not that influential. And it's not like I have people, right? So my yeah. people deal with the agency's yeah, people. Yeah. In the rare instance where I work with an agency, it's me working with the agency. Yeah. And even that, I prefer working with the client, but that's, a, that's another rat hole we go down. Um, so I, I really can't address that. I... I in a rare moment of humility, let me tell you, I don't really have <laughs> yeah, much no, of no, value okay. to add to this part of the discussion. Well, what this really means, what are some brands that maybe you're following right now with some great leaders or some brands that are doing some cool stuff that we should be following? You're like, man, watch out for this brand or watch what this guy's doing. Okay, so these folks. I know you may find this amazing, but I think that the company Anchor, A-N-K-E-R, okay. okay. that makes the power supplies and the cables yeah. and you know, all that kind of stuff. I'm just blown away by the quality of Anchor and right. the price point and all that. And, you know, like, I mean, this is a Chinese company. You you, yeah. you affiliate, you associate that with like cheap, flimsy, you mm. know, crappy kind of stuff. But I just, everything I bought from Anchor, I love. So okay. <laughs> there. that's great to know. I bet not many people that look up the Anchor like I do. Okay. Okay. Any other brands that you're following or kind of marketing leaders? Um, I'm close friends with my buddies at Sony and you're yeah. watching this on a Sony camera and hopefully uh, are the are the books and things behind myself a little fuzzy and out of They're focus? They're fuzzy. Yeah. Okay. Yeah. 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 So what I have going on here is I'm using a DSLR with a 50 millimeter prime. So yeah. I'm not using my computers over there. I'm not using the FaceTime camera. I'm not using a Logitech camera. I have a DSLR set up here, and so uh, I. Well, although we're on Skype, so Skype can, with software, defocus the background. Yes. But I'm a purist, and so yeah. I've spent hours trying to make this these books out of focus. <laughs> that is awesome. That is awesome. So, and tell me, what is the tool that you've got between the DSLR and your computer? What do you what do you what are you using to kind of connect the two? Well, it goes Sony to yeah, an Sony. Elgato SD60 converter that takes yep. the Sony HDMI and converts it to USB. Well, riddle me this. You, you've spent all this time with some incredible thought leaders. What made someone stand out as a, as a business leader or as maybe the creator of Canva or when you worked in Apple during the days? What, what was special about that person that you... Well, at, at the far extreme, I worked for Steve Jobs. And yeah, he's kind of 10 standard deviations beyond everybody, right? Very difficult to work for, true visionary, true reality distortion field, you know, hard as nails, um, but the best experience ever. Mm. I, I would not be where I am were it not for Steve Jobs. Mm. So that was just an amazing experience. Mm. And did, did Ashton Kutcher do him justice or was it, is that a true? Okay, so here's a, this is another good story. So. I have not read the books nor seen the movies. Okay. And and the reason is because I was there. So I don't, you know, uh, there's a little bit of PTSD, not clear yeah. that I you know, I don't know how many Vietnam War veterans go and watch all the Vietnam War movies, you know? Yeah. And so I'm not saying that it, it's that traumatic, but you know, and and so I know that uh if I watch the movies and I see things that I think are inaccurate, then I'll just be all aggravated, right? Yeah. Yeah. So there's not a lot of upside, and 
my name appeared twice in the movie, uh, the, the latest Steve Jobs movie, and I literally didn't know. I mean, people <laughs> had to tell me. And so finally, I had the two little clips where yeah. um, the Joanna Hoffman character, which is played by Kate Winslet, yeah. utters my name. <laughs> so Do you get the full name? Do you get the full name? Yeah, yeah, yeah. I mean, twice. Did, so. did they bring in a Hawaiian? Did you did you have a stunt double? No, here? no, no. They no. just mentioned my name. Did it? Uh, yeah. Not okay. like they they used Jackie Chan to be my double. Yeah. <laughs> so, um, so you know, my my claim to fame is that Kate Winslet uttered my name twice, and I have a an Old Spice. Do you remember when the Old Spice guy yeah. was doing all the funny Old Spice oh, things? Yeah. Well, I was one of them. So. I Can it get really... any better than that? What? What? You were one of the name. Like, how did he say your name in the? Yeah, in you the know, commercial? he says like, so Guy Kawasaki, you know, blah 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 blah. And they were going and they were making these thirty-second clips, just doing funny clips about personalities, and, oh, and somehow awesome. I made the cut. So that, that's the day I truly had arrived when I you was made it. Old Spice guy, yeah. Wow. Why, how are and you, you know even what? here right now? F funny story. So. Oh, what country was I in? Uh, it was, I think, Dubai. And there's the Old Spice guy. His name is Mustafa. He has the world's greatest name. Mustafa Mohammed or I mean something like that. He played in the NFL and he, he's sitting there. And I say, you the Old Spice guy. And I'm like, yeah. And so we, we clear customs, we say hello, and the next time, I leave two days later, because I, you know, I only stay in any place two days, and he's on, he's in the airport, in the, you know, VIP lounge, I get to spend more time with him, we became friends, and he sent me a bunch of Old Spice stuff, <laughs> I can go get my Old Spice shirt if you want, <laughs> yeah. That is, that is awesome. So when you talk about Steve Jobs, and, and then meeting the creator of Canva, like, do you see similarities, do you see differences, or what's, what's it been like working with these oh, visionary um, leaders? You know, I, I, it's an honor and a privilege to work for Steve Jobs and for mm -hmm. Melanie Perkins. I mean, yeah. Melanie Perkins, I don't know, she, I, she's probably 30, she's between 30 and 35, you know, someplace yeah. in there. So she's about half my age, yeah. and she just had a vision that you know, using Photoshop and Illustrator was too hard mm -hmm. and as we say in Silicon Valley or at Apple you know there must be a better way and so she started off making yearbooks uh, for schools and she made it so easy to make school book uh, yearbooks that people ask her well you know can I use your technology to make flyers and business mm -hmm. cards and, you know, et cetera et cetera and that was the genesis of Canva and wow. now we have about a thousand people and as I said we make millions of images wow. every day and for those that haven't been on yet, it's totally free. It's a freemium system, so you can go on for free and get how much would you say percentage of the software versus the paid version? Well, the, the paid version, um, it kicks in with a, a greater selection of uh, free stock photos. Yeah. And it kicks in with the ability to do this you know, brand control, right? We fix the font, we fix the templates, we fix the color palette. So there's the, the collaboration kicks in. But as a free user, you you pretty much I mean, <laughs> yeah. M m honestly, most people might never pay. Uh, if you're uploading your own photos and you're using most of the templates, but there's always that just enough. And for example, when you go to the the enterprise version and you start paying twenty or thirty bucks a month, then you have unlimited use of I don't know tens of millions of stock photos and so you know I, I'm used to paying 30 bucks a stock photo so I can either pay 30 bucks for one photo or I can join Canva Enterprise I mean <laughs> duh yeah. and are most people <laughs> using it are they mobile users or desktop users what's kind of the breakdown typically for a Canva I think, user well we just introduced the Mac desktop version so it's you know 99.9% .9 probably uh, mobile okay okay very cool. And, and for you, what, well, what's next? I take that back. Yeah, that's yeah. not accurate because okay. we introduced a desktop app. Okay. Right? But that's different than using a browser on your right. desktop to do Canva. Yeah. I, I think that most Canva graphics, well, they could tell me, but I think most Canva graphics are built on a desktop using mm -hmm. the cloud-based version. 
the Mac app just shipped to be totally okay. 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 Very cool. And, and for you, what's next for you, kind of in this adventure of life? Like you ride yes. your Mercedes. You're riding your Mercedes, I assume. You still <laughs> yeah. like your Mercedes? Yes. Yes. And uh, I'm living in Santa Cruz. You know, the reason why this appointment started at 10 is because I was surfing till 9:30, and um, you know, I'm just gonna ride Canva, and hopefully a Mercedes Benz and my podcast into the sunset. Guys, this is amazing. Thank you so much for being on the show. It's been a privilege and an honor. Uh, oh, I need I need to go watch that uh, Steve Jobs, you know, video. Yeah. You know, yeah. like, what do you what do you even call them? Documentary, but it's you know. No, it's the biopic. Steve Kate Winslet, and I don't I don't even know the. <laughs> okay, I'm gonna go listen. I'm gonna go listen. We might even be able to cut these into this uh, this show here. Uh, you, you know, I I think that would fall under the fair use. Uh, All right. Because it's only about two 20-second intervals. Okay, okay. And, and be sure to go, you know, if you're an entrepreneur, mm -hmm. uh, go to remarkablepeople.com. That's yeah. the website for the podcast. If you're a marketer, you have to, uh, you have to listen to Bob Cialdini, who's the godfather of influence. Okay. David Ocker, who's the godfather of branding. Uh, and I, Justine, and Gary Vaynerchuk. Because yeah. those four people are on my podcast. Wow. If you're an entrepreneur, yeah. I would add to that list uh, Steve Wozniak. Because yeah. Steve Wozniak explains the start of Apple. And let's just say that it's not what you probably think it is. So those five episodes would certainly be required listening on my podcast for any entrepreneur or marketeer. That's awesome. Thank you so much. This is really Thank great. Make you. sure you check out uh, Remarkable People. What city are you in? We are in just outside Vancouver called Fort Langley. Oh. I went to the uh, I went to the Winter Olympics in Vancouver. Oh yeah, that was right in our backyard here. Yeah. That's amazing. What did you think? I, I love Vancouver. It's too bad it does not have better surfing, but yeah. yeah I love you, Vancouver. If you go to Vancouver Island, you can go up island a bit. It's called Tofino. Yeah. And and it's famous for its winter surfing. Yeah, winter surfing is kind of a Contradiction of terms. <laughs> yes, yeah, it's a bit, no, it's a very because I, I went to Uvic. It's a very Canadian thing. You get a you get a full suit. You got like you got a little yeah. window, but it's like oh man, if you get it, if any leaks come through your wetsuit, then it is freezing. Well, yeah. I you know my hats off to Canada. I love I love donuts. <laughs> mm -hmm. uh, one of my closest friends is Amber Mack, Amber MacArthur, oh, right yes. in Toronto. So she's a real buddy of mine, and I had friends at the Calgary Flames, and oh, I loved. Nice. Before I took up surfing, I loved hockey. I used to play hockey two or three times a week. Oh, nice! Yeah, and I maple syrup, and you know, just all the good stuff is from Canada. And you know, uh, I'm one of those people who remember um, what what the Canadian Embassy did for America during the Iran hostage situation. Mm -hmm. So. Canada cool. rocks, man. Canada yeah. rocks. And, and you know what? I, I just want to communicate that I think that America and Donald Trump has done Canada a great favor uh, in the sense that, you know, if, if you sat down and you said, how can we encourage the best and the brightest to come to Canada to live and to start a tech company? Yeah. You know, what, what can we do? And you would come on the list and say, well, you know, we're, we're losing out to America. We're losing out to Silicon Valley. Yeah. So, God, you know, if I could have this magic wish, yeah. America would stop issuing work visas. Yeah. And, and they would, you know, stop supporting entrepreneurship. Mm -hmm. And they would try to keep all the jobs for Americans. And so people would say, well, where else can we go with a... A law system based on English common law, and where where do they speak English? Well, plus French, but they speak English. Yeah, yeah. And where is it located in North America? And where do they have good universities that we can, you know, draw from out of Toronto? Because now, you know, uh, BlackBerry isn't there, and yeah. And we answered your prayers. There you I mean, go. You should you. Canadians should love Americans for what we're doing for you right <laughs> now. And, and Vancouver is home to Hootsuite. 
and uh, I, I unbound. Use every day, 20 times a day, yeah. Okay, that's right, yeah, they're, they're, I used to, uh, years ago, used to dress up as the owl for Ryan and was his <laughs> owl mascot way back in the day. So that's like, the, the, and this was the original owl costume where it was like super sweaty and didn't include any fans. Uh, and we're, you know, Canada is the home birthplace of Shopify and Flickr and Slack, all got birthed here in this great country. And yeah. you know that, that island, what's that island? You kind of go across a little bridge and it's in the middle of Vancouver and it's got like... Oh, Granville Island. Oh, I love that island, yeah. Yes, yes, no, they have yeah. the best bagels in town and uh, a fun little, uh, you know, park there for the kids. I take my kids there quite often, it's quite nice. Yeah. Awesome. All righty. Guys, it's a privilege and an Thank honor you. to have you on the show. Thank, Thank you, everyone, for joining us this week on Marketing Bye. Jam. And we'll see you next week. Take care. Thanks, Bye. Everybody.